From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us on the new news. I'm Diane Parker. Miller has our midweek forecast plus a warning about tick disease here in Montana. But first, our top story happening this afternoon at one o'clock. The Montana House will consider disciplinary action against Missoula Representative Zoe Zephyr. Members are set to discuss a motion to decide if her conduct during protests this week violated rules surrounding collective rights, safety, dignity, integrity or decorum. MTN's Jonathan Ambarian has the very latest about these unprecedented few days at the Capitol. I'm Jonathan Ambarian here at the Montana State Capitol where it's essentially an unprecedented day as the Montana House is getting ready to decide whether to take disciplinary action against one of its members. At 1 p.m. the House is going to consider a motion related to Representative Zoe Zephyr, a Democrat from Missoula, and whether her actions during Monday's disruptive protest in the House violated the House's rules, decorum, or safety. Now what we know is uh, very limited at this time, but essentially the House could be considering a potential uh, disciplinary action ranging from censure to something more severe. On Monday, there were a number of protesters here in the House gallery who were loud, disruptive, uh, shouting and chanting. It was the latest in an ongoing dispute where essentially the House Speaker, Matt Regeer, had decided not to recognize Zephyr on the floor because Zephyr, a transgender woman, had made some comments during a debate on a ban on gender-affirming care for minors that the Republicans felt went against the decorum of the House. MTN will have live feed uh, starting this afternoon, and of course we'll have additional coverage as we learn more throughout the rest of the day. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. So at one o'clock this afternoon, the House will discuss Zephyr's potential rule violations during Monday's protest. Galleries will be closed to the public, but you'll be able to watch online and you can stream this live right here on your local MTN streaming device or live on our website. Representative Zephyr tweeting this last night, quote, I have been informed that during tomorrow's floor session, there will be a motion to either censure or expel me. I've also been told I'll get a chance to speak. I will do as I have always done, rise on behalf of my constituents in defense of my community and for democracy itself. Welcome to the hump, everybody. Hopefully Wednesday treating you good so far. Local forecast coming up, but first let's take a look at what's going across the U.S. today. Your weather headlines, central and southern plains, heavy rain and severe thunderstorms are expected. Look down there in the big D of Dallas. You see that brown shaded area? That right there, a really good potential there for the possibility of some uh, really strong storms, severe storms that could lead to some tornado activity. So keep those folks in your thoughts and prayers today. Fingers crossed that that's not what happens, but right now it's looking like those elements are in place where we can see some tornadoes uh, down there. Southern Rockies to the Southern High Plains, elevated fire weather, danger can persist today, windy, dry. Uh, Florida even getting in on a uh, shot of maybe seeing some severe thunderstorms today. Here locally, well, mild temperatures today, maybe cooler tomorrow, but the weekend looking good. We'll take a look coming up. Governor Greg Gianforte just signed a bill into law doubling the amount of money landowners can make in the block management program. The cap for compensation is now $50,000 for those who open their land to BLM. The law takes effect immediately. In Billings, the 80 students making up Rocky Vista's university's inaugural class will be arriving before we know it. They'll make their way to the new West End Medical School for classes beginning in mid-July. One of those students just graduated from MSU Billings. The Oregon native fell in love with Montana and he's raising his four-month-old daughter in Billings. And while he's thrilled he can pursue his future as a medical doctor in Montana, he still needed a little convincing before committing to RVU. It wasn't until my interview day that I really decided to stay here. I was very impressed with Dr. Park, the dean. He answered all of our questions and left us with no doubts. He was just very inspiring. RVU is a private university. The annual cost to attend is around $60,000. Tuition at public medical schools come in closer to about $53,000. A familiar face will be front and center in tonight's episode of Jeopardy. Longtime Montana journalist and now Los Angeles resident Ian Marquand made it through the many rounds of testing to be selected as a contestant. He said family and friends encouraged him to try out because they were tired of always losing trivia contests to him. 
The categories can come from absolutely anywhere. So it's really hard to, if you will, study for it. Uh, I know people have written about how they, you know, went about studying for it, but not everything is a quote knowledge category. Some of them are just, they're like brain teasers. You just have to think in certain parameters and 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 try and come up with the answer. Uh, the main thing is uh, just you got your button in your hand and you're like doing this all the time, uh, but, the, but you're not supposed to ring in too early or else there's a very slight delay. So you might get locked out. So it's trying to time it and just, you know, uh, pumping that button as often as you can. And Ian tells us it was a wonderful experience. Of course, we won't know how well he did until the show airs tonight at six right here on your local MTN station. And that's a look at some of the day's top stories. At eight digits long, this is the biggest donation ever made for Montana Tech in the history of the Butte University. And with the success of the basketball team, recent Goldwater scholarships, and now this generous donation, you got to ask if 2023 is turning out to be a banner year for this small Butte University. I mean, we're, what are we? We're in April. I think it's been a hell of a good year so far, John. <laughs> it's been a great year. <laughs> there was one word repeated about this $31 million donation to Montana Tech. But transformative. 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 Montana Tech Foundation CEO Jamie Hepler put it in simpler terms. It truly is a big freaking day at Montana Tech. Montana Tech alum Ryan Lance and his wife Lisa gifted the massive sum to go to educational programs, research, workforce training, and scholarships. The Lance Scholarship will give over 50 Montana students $4,000 per year for four years in scholarship funds. The scholarship it's a gift that will allow Montana students to study, learn, and grow with less worry of the financial burdens that come with the cost of a higher education. The Lances spoke over a video call during the event this week. Ryan Lance is a 1984 graduate of Montana Tech who went on to become CEO of ConocoPhillips. Montana Tech will rename its School of Mines and Engineering to Lance College of Mines and Engineering. With Ryan and Lisa's gift, we will join the most elite engineering colleges in the country. In Butte, John Amy. MTN News.